My name is uh, Detlef Weigel. I'm director here at the Max Planck Institute. I led a lab for almost 10 years in the United States before I came here about two decades ago. I'm a plant geneticist and for the past almost two decades I have been a director at the Max Planck Institute for Developmental Biology here in Tübingen. I'm born in uh, Germany, but I'm a, a dual German-American citizen. I'm a naturalized U.S. citizen. Uh, also, my children are of mixed ethnicity, half European, half Asian. So for this reason, the recent uh, BLM movement in events, this hit really um, close to home. And what I realized, uh, Bridget has been in the lab for a number of years, but we've never talked about racism, either in the Institute or here in uh, Tübingen. One of the outcomes of this is that Bridget and I, we've had a number of conversations over the last few weeks, and uh, hopefully we'll get to this later. Bridget also has formally taught us quite a bit. Bridget. So my name is Bridget Vedaka Vasilyevich. I'm a graduate student um, in Detlef's lab. I am studying evolutionary genetics of herbicide-resistant weeds. Um, I've been living in Europe and in, partially in the U.S. Of, for the last eight years during my pursuit of my graduate education. However, I was born and raised in Kenya. So I've never talked about a lot of the experiences that I've had regarding racism and prejudice. But in light of current events surrounding the Black Lives Matter movement, I think it's time to start having these uncomfortable conversations. Thank you, uh, Bridget. So in, in preparation of what we're going to discuss today, we already had talked to each other a couple of times for uh, a little bit um, longer. And uh, I'd be really curious um, to hear what is your perspective, having come from Africa, then having lived in the United States for a number of years, and then coming here uh, to Europe, to um, uh, Germany, where the way I um, grew up, we like to pretend that you know we are even more colorblind than anywhere else, and that there is no racism. Now I know that that is not 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 true, but I'd really like to learn from you um, how this manifests it, itself, and I'm I'm sure it's often really rather rather subtle and, and something that is very easily overlooked by outsiders. Yeah, um, I think I'll just start with how growing up in Kenya, I never really understood what racism was. So in, in my experiences there, I mean, we are all black. Uh, the limited experiences with racism were, for instance, if I go to a store that's perhaps Indian owned and I may be followed around there, but those are just a very different set of dynamics to what we see in the West. So when I left Kenya in my 20s to pursue my master's, so I first started in Europe before doing um, my semester in the US, uh, it was really, it was a bit of a culture shock because I never really thought I knew, I, I, thought, I thought I understood what racism was in that context. And how we are taught is that it manifests in this very violent way. So what you see, so for instance, if I take a German example, it's the attacks in the East by, let's say, neo-Nazis on, on foreigners, or um, historically in the US, you see the, what the KKK does, or police brutality, which is um, obviously disproportionately experienced by people of color. So I never, re I never really thought that it could manifest in any other ways. And um, when people previously told me the experiences, I was very dismissive of that. And I never really thought, huh, maybe there's actually something to this because it just wasn't my own experience. But when I was living in Europe, um, so it was very, it was very painful, the very first experience when um, I got to understand I'm being treated a specific way just because of the way I look. And that was something that it took me aback. It really... It really, um, I really internalized that experience. And it also made me more aware such that every single experience that I had after, I would have to be more discerning. I would have to think, 
I don't think I can be able to just brush that experience off. I think it's pretty much because of the way I look. And um, so in, in Europe, obviously, in my experience, it's been very, very subtle. So it's not, it's not what you'd think that someone on the street just um, calls me the N-word or no, that, that doesn't happen in that sense. But how it would appear here is that if, yeah, um, let's say, I, I can only, let's say, draw from my own personal experiences. So for instance, if uh, when I was sitting on a bus one time and uh, it was a lady who was um, trying to help a fellow, um, a fellow um, traveler who'd come from the US, he was a young man, and um, we had just arrived, all of us, and we were on the bus heading to the train station, and she was giving him advice on how to navigate the city, and this was in Spain. And she came out and she was saying, um, so she looked around the bus and then she narrowed in on me and then she said, and she was talking to him and she was like, you know, you really need to be careful when you're around specific people. And she was really honing in on me, like, you really need to be careful. Then he was really spooked and he turned around and looked at me and I was just like, okay, um, I don't understand what this, <laughs> what has just happened here. I'm very tired. I just want to go home. I am jet lagged. And she was using me as the example of people to fear in this context when she had no conceivable um, idea of who I was, what I was doing in that country, and heck, maybe even I need to be careful of certain people in the city. So that was something that was very foreign to me, and I thought that, wow, okay, so that's, that's my welcome to Europe. Okay, that's how I have to be careful um, in this sort of space. Um, and yeah. then, then uh, Bridget, so then, did you, I'm, I'm sure you also had this experience where somebody explained it to you. So I know this, you know, from my, from my own family, you know, so when, when we have things happening and uh, to my wife, they are, they are subtle and we bring it up with our friends, you know, either together or I bring it up with friends that everybody says, no, this is, you know, uh, completely impossible and you're seeing this wrong. It's not be not you know uh, what you think it is so i'm yeah suspect that this has happened to you <laughs> many many times too many than i can count so much so especially here i have to say that's been my experience in germany so germany is a bit different in all the other spaces that i've lived in because in the uk and in the us for instance it's known it's known that th these spaces are quite prejudiced against people of color, specific, specifically black people. But in Germany, I feel like there's a kind of notion, like you'd mentioned earlier, that no, here, no, racism just does not exist here. And I think it's because of the idea that people have of what racism is, there's this fixation that if it's not something that's overtly violent, and then that's not racism. And I feel like I think that's the mindset that people come with when they're, when they're explaining to me what these microaggressions which are linked to racism are because yeah when i was looking for a house and i was thinking am i actually crazy about this interaction but then um, when i talked to my friends who are people of color they were like you understand that's racism right but then when i'm talking to other germans or other white people they're like no 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 i'm pretty sure this person is just you know it's just bad news and that's just one example yeah and i've had also a lot of friends of mine who are um, maybe not necessarily black, but non-white, and they've had the very same experience where people will tell them, no, this is, yeah, you, you, you have that wrong. Everyone is always explaining away all of these instances. And I think that really doesn't help us deal with the issue, the mm -hmm. issue at hand. And, and so, so, so I, I suspect even more that, so it's, it's, it's settled outside and, and people refuse to, to see it. And it's uh, probably even more subtle often here at the institute or the, the, the university, so in your work surroundings. And uh, um, I suspect that yeah, it's also being explained away, although it might also be different because there are relatively few Germans. So you have people from all over uh, the, the world and they have their own uh, experiences. So, so I'd be curious both here at the Institute and mm -hmm. in, in, in science, mm -hmm. in, in, in general, what have you experienced there? What do you experience? And again, can you, you know, who can you discuss it uh, um, with? And again, I, I started by saying, you know, it's really ridiculous that you've been in the lab for so many years and 
um, I certainly have me guilty of this, you know, uh, hoping that, you know, everything is, 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 is fine. And I think this is also uh, part of this, 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 this racism, while I don't think I, you know, this is something that clearly went through my mind, but probably there was some of this, you know, so Bridget has this great, you know, great opportunity here at the Institute, and, you know, we've really, you know, done a lot, and, you know, we don't really have to deal with the rest in a way. Yeah, no, I, I get that. Um, I mean, in that, in, that, in that sense, it's been a really lonely experience in the Institute, because, um, I mean, the beauty with the Max Planck is that, obviously, it's, it's very diverse in that I may not be... I, yeah, there may be very few, let's say, black people on campus, on campus, but there are so many other people. So it's the feeling of feeling, yeah, I don't necessarily feel alone, but then it's difficult finding um, that sense of camaraderie with people who've shared that same experience. One thing that, that we, we discussed where you said this was um, difficult uh, for you in a way to... to, to, to to deal with or come to terms with, so when we, you know, do get images for the photo for 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 the institute, and you know, then often you were asked to be in the, in 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 the picture, and so this uh, uh, this trade-off or paradox or, or whatever. So there's only you know one African here at the institute or in the lab or whatever, and you are showcase so um, is that good because it shows that the institute is open-minded or is this really you know just you know whitewashing of uh, lack of, of, of diversity so how yeah. you know we, we talked about this this already but I'd like yeah. to hear from you so what what emotions that uh, triggered really so I mean in the beginning I was really apprehensive about it because I felt that, yeah, I was literally that, like a poster child. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, you know, now that we finally have a, a black woman here, we really need to put her front and center mm -hmm. and really show that. And th I mean, that, that in, in a sense, if you're looking at the environment, I mean, if there, if there are more people who look like me there, then sure, it's okay because you're really showing how diverse it is. But mm -hmm it's going to be very um, misleading if I'm put there to encourage more people like me to come. But you see the message with putting me there is showing that, come, like there are people like you here, but no, it's actually this person like me here. There's, there's not that, that um, let's say, critical number, if you will. Mm. But then um, I did come to understand what, what, what my purpose there is. And I had to look beyond myself that, yeah, I do want... If someone looks at, at me there and they can see themselves reflected in this institute, then it will encourage more people to come. So it really goes beyond me. And if that encourages more people to apply and they feel encouraged to come to an environment which is going to, I mean, which cares about that, that diversity, then, I mean, I think that's, that's good overall. Mm -hmm. But it's something that I really had to, I really had to battle with. Mm -hmm. I really had to come to terms with that, yeah, it's fine if I am used in this context because there's a greater good mm -hmm. in that. But I just hope that in putting me there, then the people who are putting me there can also reflect and see what are they doing to increase their diversity themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are, they, are they advertising as broadly as possible to get more, more applicants who, yeah, who are not necessarily European or American or, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that, that's certainly something that, you know, I, I admit I haven't thought a whole lot about in terms of, you know, ethnicity and whatnot, but I've, I've thought a lot about uh, in terms of uh, gender, for example, and so I've thought a lot about, you know, quotas and, and non-quotas, and uh, I think, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, very much a defendant of quotas, so I think that uh, quotas are, are needed, but... Um, I also know from talking to my women colleagues that, especially among them, this is, you know, seen as very much a, a double-edged sword. And so I can see how, you know, with ethnicity, it's in in a way even worse than uh, it is with um, uh, gender. Yes, but so, so, so there's um, there's something else I want to um, ask you, um, Bridget, since. You know, we started off on this track, so where people wonder, you know, why is she here, and 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 all this. 
Um, what I've started to, to realize in the past um, few uh, weeks when I think about training African um, um, scientists that what comes first to my mind is, you know, helping Africa, you know, we work on plants and, you know, help Africa make better plants and, 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 and whatnot, help breeding. And so this is also, you know, uh, very one-sided, very, in a way, you know, colonialist. Uh, type of, of, of view and so I realized that this is you know not how this is just not right you know so to to treat our African our black colleagues really on on eye level and to you know start out by saying so Bridget is here and so, so I think w with you it was different from where you came you came yeah. you know through this forensic background yeah. uh, which was a bit untypical so typically when people apply here they might have been at a CGIR you know, uh, institute and, yeah. and really come with breeding, that's what they want to learn. So, mm -hmm. so you are a little bit different there. And, and that's something in your case I hadn't thought about, but I admit that normally it is, you know, not necessarily on, on, on it is not on eye level and where it's really, well, so here's somebody who is just curious about the natural world in the same way uh, uh, as, as I am. Yeah. And so, 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 sorry that I've been a little bit long-winded there, but again, yeah. so I can uh, imagine that that is also something that, you know, you deal with quite, quite often, that, you know, people ask, you know, why is she here, and is she also a, you know, is, ba is, is basic science driving her, and just, you know, uh, wanting to answer some, some question, or does she, quote-unquote, only want to use science as a tool to improve the world. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> I've had to really, uh, I, 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 we've mentioned this before, but since coming here, like literally from the get-go, I feel like I've had to justify <laughs> my presence here because it really did not compute. Also, I think, I think my background, my academic background itself was also very, yeah, unorthodox and that, that obviously brought a lot of confusion but also the fact that yeah I'm not necessarily going to take this and you know apply it in Kenya and go to the farmers and tell them you know but really just trying to understand the, the genetics behind this and um, yeah it's it's not it's not typical yeah uh, Africans obviously we only care about applied research yeah, uh, there's no room for curiosity. And I do understand where that, where that sentiment comes from. I really do. But I feel like when we are not really allowed to use our talents or our curiosity to really just explore and build whatever skill set that we can during our time in academia, then we're just, it's, it's, such, a, it's such a disservice. So, yeah, uh, it's, yeah, I think that, that's about as much as I can say about that. Yeah, I've had to really really just um, defend that position that, yeah, no, I'm, I'm here. And the natural question would be, are you an attachment from your home country? Mm -hmm. I'm like, um, no, no, I'm, I'm a PhD student here. But then does that mean that there's another university that sent you? It's like, no, no, mm -hmm. I actually went through the, in, the same kind of application process as other people. And before, it never used to bother me so much. It happened once, okay, it happened twice, but it kept on happening. And then it made me wonder, these people who are asking me this question, do they also use, ask this question to other non-white Europeans or even other non-German white Europeans? No, it's only me who's being asked this question over and over and over again. So I think there's a big shift that really needs to happen as to what, uh, what a scientist looks like, what a basic researcher looks like. And yeah, our interests can be very varied. Hear, hearing this, you know, so that people who are as, you know, educated and hopefully politically aware as the average director at the Max Planck Society, um, challenging whether diversity is actually a goal that we need to uh, need to pursue. Uh, what, so, what, what's your reaction to that? Uh, uh, um, be, beyond other. <laughs> And I disbelieve. Okay, so, I mean, that, that kind of mentality, I think, also stems from the 
stems from that thinking that yeah, you know, Germany is post-racial. We don't we don't really deal with that. It's in the constitution. Um, yeah, that or is it? Yeah, the Bill of I I don't know the equivalent of the Bill of Rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the, the the first ten articles of the German constitution exactly. are the Bill of. Uh, are the the, 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 the the human rights so, exactly yeah. so um, yeah so that's that stems from that but then I think the question people need to ask okay so diversity is not something that we need to think about but look at science and look at German society do you feel that if you look across all the scientific fields do you see German society reflected in that so Germany may not have had a, um, a let's say as long a colonial history as Obviously, France, the UK, um, and uh, yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of other European countries. But then um, there are a lot of people here who have immigrant backgrounds that have been living here for years and years. So, if we look at the Turkish Germans, do we see them represented equally across all? Let's say, let me not even just say in science, but you know, in the corporate world, uh, where, wherever, do we see? Do we see that? Do we see them reflected in that? There are over five million, five million of them in the country. But in science, I can I can count. I can count how many I have seen, and in, so that that kind of thinking is really, it's really myopic. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, there's there's no room. There's no room for that. If you go outside and you see, and if people congratulate themselves and they say, yes, German society is incredibly incredibly diverse. But yeah, and in the sciences, is that diversity reflected here? No, then that, that's, that's definitely a problem. Why is there a fallout? They can't come and tell you, no, no, Turkish Germans are just not interested in science. You know, mm -hmm. they have bigger concerns. No, they don't. We need to ask, how come, how, how come they're not being encouraged to come up and take these positions? So mm -hmm. that would be, that would be my, my sort of rebuttal. I mean, what the Max Planck does right is that I, I think, okay, I don't know the society it, as well. Maybe I can there briefly interrupt. So yeah. I think what the, so many Germans uh, fall into this uh, trap, and that's also a typical trap in the, uh, in the United States, mm -hmm. where they um, primarily see it through the lens of uh, social uh, class mm. and education. Mm -hmm. So most people will say, well, we have a problem with you know, uh, making sure that more uh, people of Turkish background, for example, mm -hmm. get good um, uh, get good um, education, mm -hmm. and so the reason that we don't have them represented in science and whatnot, it has more to do with the failure of education. And, but they will, you know, so, 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 and this is in the U.S. is a very mm -hmm. common uh, a common trope. But we know in the in the U.S. and uh, um, I'm sure the same is true. You control for social background, for uh, parental income, and so on and so forth. These differences are, are still there, and, and that's the definition of structural racism. That exactly. it's uh, it goes beyond um, class, yeah. um, basically. But just to come back to this, so mm -hmm. the Germans, I think, even more so than in in, in the U.S., um, see things through this class lens, and therefore refuse. To accept that there are things that have to do with, you know, ethnic background or race or whatever you want to um, you you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, I think also there's there's something just al along the lines of why there's also not maybe so much of a representation in, of minorities in science. This is something that I was talking uh, talking with some of my friends, and they brought this up that, especially so. Back, back, back in Africa as well. So let me speak for Kenya. A lot of people also wouldn't enter science because it's just not something that's lucrative. Mm -hmm. So more, more people would probably go into law or go into some form of business, finance, economics, mm -hmm. because that's what's going to that's what's going to bring the fast money. Mm -hmm. And it's probably it's probably the same that I think in in the U.S. it definitely present it presents itself there, and maybe also here in, in Europe that a lot of people, especially if you're poor and you've had the opportunity to go to university, you'll definitely want to take a career path that is going to bring you the fastest gains. Mm -hmm. So something that is incredible, you can get a job quickly and that you can be able to quickly build some wealth. Mm -hmm. And we're assuming that a lot of minorities just don't have the access to that generational wealth. 
-hmm. But um, so the, the, the decision to pursue an academic career, and it's a very, you know, it's a very demanding path. If you mm -hmm. do not have enough of a, let's say, of a, of a cushion, you can, you can really just end up, you know, let's say after your, your doctorate, after your postdoc, you just end up jobless and you're like, okay, mm -hmm. so what, what am I going to do? But I feel like people who have enough of a cushion can be able to take that risk and really push themselves through. And maybe that's also something to look into as to how can we be able to support people so they don't have to make an education decision based on how much money they can get off of it once they graduate, but they can actually pursue something that they are good at and something that they have passion for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Bridget, uh, one of the things that uh, you've done recently is to give the lab uh, as part of our regular group meeting um, a, a primer on um, structural racism, um, which was really very, very uh, well uh, prepared and uh, made me very emotional listening um, to you. What was the uh, feedback from, from, from the lab? Did you feel that uh, most uh, people in the lab understood what you were you know, trying to teach us? I think so. I think just to open up the conversation in the lab for people, especially for people who I don't really interact much with outside of the lab or also just we don't really have a lot of scientific discussions. So, I mean, the decision to do the, to do the, the presentation was very difficult for me just to come to that and because I knew it would lay bare a lot of, the, a lot of my own um, feelings about it. I was quite emotional during, during the presentation and a lot of, um, a few people uh, did mention that to me that they saw that and they were grateful for, th for the fact that I did it anyway. Um, I mean, I did feel quite self-conscious also after, but then I did get a lot of people who just reached out and said thank you for this and with whom I've had subsequent conversations with and who I'm even meeting to talk about this with, and that's been wonderful. Um, I, I was obviously initially apprehensive to also give the talk because I was very worried about what people would perceive, how they, why, like for instance, why am I doing this? And um, I just, yeah, I, I, was, I was very self-conscious about it. And especially for me, from the, I was really worried about the perception of the Germans. And it's because I felt that in Germany, the conversations around racism and privilege and prejudice were not really being had at the level they were being had in other countries, uh, whereby the protests in the US had spilled over, like in the UK, in France, in Belgium, where I never thought they'd be having conversations about toppling statues of Leopold. Mm -hmm. So that was really, I really wanted to just be the conduit, like to just start that conversation in Germany. And um, in as much as I did get a lot of overwhelming like support and just perspectives from people who've also challenged, like they were challenged to also look into their own lives. Um, I did get a few people who did tell me, yeah, you know, um, like the responses among, along the vein of all lives matter. I, I was really happy to, to talk about this in the lab and just to get to see the amount of resources that are there and also get to understand the German experience of black Germans. Yeah, that, 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 that was, I think, yeah, one, something that really, really stuck with me. Bridget, this was um, really a very important conversation um, that we had. I'm really glad that things are changing, but what is also very clear that the hard work is ahead of us. So now this has been everywhere in the news. There has been a lot of momentum around this and what is important that we really challenge ourselves from now on to continue the work that we have started. And I hope you will remind me regularly of this commitment. I will.